Mariana, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, you know, we are uh, playing in the, our journeys about uh, storytelling co-creation uh, within the context of Web3, right? We, we took a step back and asked ourselves, how would that look like when you are telling stories? And that story uh, that starts with an individual, let's say becomes uh, a collaborators join, and different type of artists, you know, uh, illustrators, you know, sound, all that comes together, right? They all compose and create sort of this, this uh, um, uh, content or media, right? And uh, that question led us to say, hey, we, we wanna make sure that whatever we're doing, our innate uh, reason, right? Uh, that drives something that we care greatly about. And this happens to be the manga anime space that I've been very close to for many, many years. And then, you know, I've seen anime from a very niche, you know, from the eighties in Japan, all the way now to uh, sort of a global phenomena. But then why, how come the creators are struggling, right? You know, how come they're overworked? You know, the demand is increasing, but the model that, that, that is the traditional today is, is somehow not sustainable. But on the other hand, you have so many of the uh, generations that grew up with anime and manga and also dream of becoming uh, and working and making a living uh, through that art form. So we were like, you know, we needed to sort of lock our intent. And this is what we was decided. We say, let's try to address this problem uh, that the industry faces today. And that's what led us to crypto anime, because if you really combine crypto and anime, right, it means so much more crypto, the blockchain, you know, it's, it's a, a, a natural, like sort of the char core characteristics of change and economic change. And, and, and that's what's needed too, right? Always, you know, when you're trying to build these new ecosystems. Now, digital assets too, today we're talking about, you know, tokens and NFTs, but what does it actually mean? Right. If you go deeper and deeper, and you can innovate through different type of digital assets or combination of them, and to finally be able to sort of sustain this next generation of the artists and their works. So we were like, you know, okay, you know, if we were gonna do that, we also need to live it, and live it means like we need to tell our story. And we are, me and, and, and my like collaborators, we love storytelling. So we said, okay, we need to have a character, right? You kind of try to make sense of what's going on in the marketplace, you know, since, since last year, the generative collections and so forth of you. Since you don't know, you start grabbing onto what's out there and, and then try to bring it in and understand. And, 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 and one key important is that to see if that matches with our identity. Therefore, we need to know who we are as a group, what we're trying to achieve. And that's what out of the blue, I came across this character, you know, and this happens to be from the first anime, short anime in 1917. And it tells this story of this, you know, a hero wannabe, you know, samurai just becomes a samurai and then it is actually a punchline of a joke. So we said, what about if we bring him back now? within this context because he was the genesis back then. But now he comes here and that's when we say, okay, we now have to start uh, telling the story, how he, he comes to our world from 1917, you know, to a modern version of him, okay? And then of course, as we started to play with this generative collection, something was not like making sense, right? You, you see so many out there and all the art, and, and you know, it's a great art, but what's the meaning behind? Why should I care about this? And how does that, you know, really uh, uh, enable change to what we're trying to bring? So we were not happy with this. Once we went through that, we understood, you know, we were not happy. We said this whole process of also like the traits and the different layers, right? You need to create, what, what, what does it all mean at the end of the day? Right, and that's what we say. We need to go further back into what the storytelling in co-creation means in the context of Web three. Okay, and that's when we started to focus more and more into say, okay, so if it's coming to our dimension, and where we're we gonna tell this story, what's gonna be the format? 
we, and we went through the creative process today in saying, okay, let's, we landed at a 200 word format. And then we are using this amazing Web3 uh, sort of publishing platform, story publishing platform called uh, Mirror, mirror.xyz. And the Mirror platform feels like, like Medium, right? The Substack, like the, 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 the traditional, like the, uh, the, the, the text base, right? A blog, you can embed also elements in that. But then they have all this NFT and you can uh, NFT the edition, you can do crowdfunding within that, their, 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 their system. So we're like, you know, creatively speaking, you, let's use that, right? Let's use that place because they are another team that believes in the future of Web3. Let's use their solution, tell the story, use to try to experiment with the feature. It means that their feature needs to come from within the story. Because at the end of the day, in our understanding today, this digital assets, well, the type of digital asset we want to create is a in-story digital assets. Like we're talking about NFT, you know, in, in the context of gaming, where the items in there, story too, have a lot of the traits in there, you know, a lot of backgrounds that have deep meanings. So if we can really sort of try to focus on that and give meaning, you know, and from within the story, people read and immerse themselves. We all love stories. And suddenly we start caring about what's going on in there. And then these NFTs or these tokens are really put forward. You know, it's like a meta narrative to our world and we can make decisions in how we want to progress. We want that character or the world to keep existing. And that's where we started with the story of, uh, of the Hekonai, with that 200 word format that goes with the uh, original art. And that's when we are starting to reach to many, many artists that have uh, uh, like, you know, they, they were raised and grew up, you know, dreaming to become a manga or anime artist. And now then we're understanding, you know, because most of them are in a sort of gig economy, okay? And, and their, their mental mind is in that in a model, but then we start to shift them into what does it mean to be in an ownership economy, right? What does it mean if you start contributing art to that, that post? And then when we NFT and you're gonna be a part of that as, as a, as a co-owner, what does it actually mean moving forward, you know, and, 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 and then sort of, you know, bringing this new story, right? Or IP, you know, to life. And I think that that's where we are right now in starting telling our story and then we are um, uh, gonna post our third entry into this Hekonai journal this week from another like an amazing artist from Pakistan, loves anime, manga, and, and we wanted to start experimenting. And therefore, the, for instance, the, when I saw James in a presentation, his solution might be very, very interesting as far as how we're gonna, we can bring in those because we're all talking about how we're gonna onboard them thinking as a Web3. You know, we, we, we wanted to try to use as much, you know, Web3 tools that is out there, onboard them, MetaMask, you know, connect to, to, to uh, this, you know, this service, and then start using it. Let's start being Web3. Thank you. <laughs>